Hey everybody. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna share with you my next iteration of my RT Laps Cam. Uh, it's my um, GoPro Hero 7 that I use to take time-lapse videos um, of my resin prints on my Elego Mars 3, which is, bear with me here, which is this setup over here. So that camera gets set up in this area here, looking down into the, um, <clears throat> the build area. And um, I'll, I'll link the actual original blog post of the, the first iteration of this. This is the next iteration. Um, I had some challenges that I was trying to solve with the next one, so I changed a bit of the hardware. <clears throat> but essentially what it does is um, uses a microcontroller, in this case it's a TTGO, um, T-Display unit, to actually um, using the total number of layers, the number that I input, um, to do a simple bit of math based on number of steps that this uh, can can do using the stepper motor to slowly over you know hours track the camera backwards while it's also taking a photo with every layer change of the actual um, resin print. So that's detailed out in my my um, uh, previous posting in the original version of this. So I'll link that again. Uh, but this is ready to talk about sort of the next phase of this, which is a, a few changes like I just mentioned. So. I um, changed over to a, uh, a different stepper. Well, actually a stepper. My previous motor wasn't a stepper at all. I was just doing some guessing based on uh, timing to try to get the steps or you know uh, hack the steps, if I could use that term. Uh, but I needed something with accuracy uh, where I could actually use a total number of steps and do some math to determine how far the slider can go over a period of time. So this is a 228BYJ uh, motor, 48-5 uh, uh, volt DC stepper motor um, with a ULNC 2003 uh, driver board that's hooked up to the TTGO, uh, four wires plus uh, five volt power and ground. Um, so that's that's controls the steps. Essentially, I did some testing and uh, a path running from uh, here to here is about 18,100 steps. So I can use that number uh, uh, with the TTGO and you'll see here in the interface, uh, the HMI, uh, being able to input the actual number of layers uh, that the, the sliced print will be and some simple math will determine the amount of steps to do per layer. So, you know, it can vary depending on the size of the print, but actually never use, you know, never go beyond, but I'll also use the full width. So, you know, it has a sort of like a, a growing drawing back view of the actual um, resin print. And I'll, again, I'll post another video uh, in here to show that. Um, without further ado, I'll show you what this interface looks like. Um, pardon the actual setup here. It's kind of a bit of a hack job. Right now, this is obviously not hooked up to the printer, uh, but I use an external battery supply. Uh, when it starts up, I'll throw a Plastibots logo up there and do some simple animation just for fun. And then we'll flip into the actual HMI um, for setting this thing up. So essentially, this is from, you know, probably familiar from the last posting I have. Um, I've temporarily hooked this up to a um, uh, LDR sensor just to mimic the actual, um, uh, uh, you know, UV light coming on and off as each layer changes on, on, the, on the resin printer. And that's what triggers a, um, you know, a change uh, in layers and a take, the taking of a photo. So the setup menu is controlled by two buttons here. I'm gonna get a little tool here to help me out, but basically <clears throat> the setup menu is, is really simple. Frame skip is as it says, you know, if I've got 3000 frames, I may not wanna take a picture with every single, sorry, 3000 layers, I may not wanna take a picture with every single layer. So this lets you skip four layers at a time. So every fourth layer would take a picture. Uh, use slider is basically, you know, whether this, you know, it will take pictures no matter what, but whether I want to have this sort of drifting backwards view of the time lapse the slider, you know, motor, uh, the slider would engage. And then this is really where the math is. Um, you enter the number of layers, you can quickly do that, and I'll show that in a second. Um, the simple math is done, 18,000 divided by number of layers gives you the number of steps that um, the camera should move back with each layer change. And it also considers the frame skip uh, uh, factor of four in that math. So, you know, going through the menu, you can just sort of scroll through, sorry, actually you can press it, uh, and turn on, you know, for example, to use the slider and then scroll down number of layers. I can actually push and hold this and that increases uh, by 20, the number of layers. So 
depending on how it slices, um, I can enter a number for layers. Once that's done, it's set, the math is there, it's ready to start sliding. Um, <clears throat> so um, moving over, it switches to the run menu. Clicking this button will basically engage a connection between this via Wi-Fi to the GoPro. You'll, you can hear it set there. You can barely see it, but it actually gauges a connection with the camera. It actually changes it to make sure it's actually in photo mode as well. Um, it's using uh, a, a very uh, good um, piece of software or driver called GoPro Control. Um, that's also linked in my posting. And as you can see, the, the recording has started. Now this guy's watching the light, uh, number of frames, and basically I'm mimicking with my finger you know, each layer change when the resin printer, obviously in resin printers, when it does a new layer, UV light comes on for a period of time, goes off for a period of time. I've got mine set to about every three seconds. Obviously the first 10 layers, I think, are about 30 seconds or so. This can handle all of that, so it just waits. And then with every single layer change, it actually uh, takes a picture. And in this case, because I said use slider, it moves the slider back. So you can't see that because it's a very minor change, but um, I'll, I'll do a bit of a time lapse here. Um, so I'll, I'll shut up for a second and do a bunch of things and speed this up and you'll see this change as well as the frame counts uh, increase. So just um, sit back, have a drink of coffee for a few seconds while I show how this works. All right, so that should be enough to give you an idea of, of it moving. It's In this case, it's actually moving quite quickly because I only put in a, a few hundred layers. Um, it would move much more slowly. The steps are very tiny when there's, you know, a thousand or so layers. Uh, it takes, you know, two plus hours to slide uh, the distance here. Also, from a standpoint of, you know, you may be wondering about damage and whatnot, I know I've hooked this motor up directly to the 5-volt output of the TTGO. Um, I actually, to be honest with you, I haven't done any checking on the, the maximum uh, draw or, or rating of the actual um, uh, voltage regulator in here, but it is transferring 5 volts. I think, I believe, it actually transfers directly from the USB power supply, but I'm going to double check that. But honestly, not worried. I don't think it's a big deal. There's not a lot of uh, demand on this motor, uh, even if there is any kind of a capture or stick on here. I built this in such a way that it's actually a smooth uh, wheel with a actually a smooth uh, nylon rope, but rubber a rubber Lego um, elastic here, and it has it easily slips on purpose. So you know I can grab that and move it myself without doing anything with the motor. So it's enough to create the friction necessary to move the uh, slider, but if anything gets caught, it just happily um, uh, um, moves the actual wheel without uh, friction uh, causing the motor to. Um, a stall which would obviously cause some challenges so anyway that's the upgrade I'm, I'm just I resin printed this case um, I actually did a mashup of two different cases on Thingiverse and I'll post that as well um, I've got a, a front display I've still got a print uh, that I'm, I'm trying to get right so I can get the buttons um, exposed properly and I've got you know Lego connectors connectors printed I'm gonna end up mounting this um, probably on an angle on the side of this obviously away from the wheels um, and then this whole thing um, needs to be raised up about half a foot so that it actually can look in to the top of um, the actual resin printer. So that's about it. Again, this guy here, you'll see in my other posting, this actually is wired into the back inside the, the Mars 3. Um, Non-obtrusively, I don't touch any of the electronics on the device. It's literally this light sensor looks over a... Um, if, you had to, if you had this unit apart yourself, you'd see it's quite simple, but it has just a simple little... Um, almost like a shelf um, looking down into the area where the UV LEDs are and just looking at the UV LEDs. And it, you know, it, there's a significant difference in readings between light and dark um, uh, for the UV reading. So it always catches a layer change. There's nothing that interferes with that. Um, even, even if for whatever reason that UV light isn't as intense for any one layer, it's still dramatic enough that it captures the difference between dark and light um, and always catches those frames. So, thanks for taking time to watch. Um, as always, please like and subscribe to my videos if you want to hear more of this stuff. I appreciate the support. Um, uh, anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.